Today I'm going to teach you how to invert an integer uh, specified by two variables, p and n, where p represents the position of the bit point, the point where I want to start in inverting, and n represents the amount of bits going from that position. Okay, so it's not a regular um, invert function where you just take the complement of your integer, uh, because that is extremely easy. Uh, this example, we're only gonna invert a set of bits uh, situated in that integer, in integer uh, without changing the other bits that we don't want to invert. Okay, let us include the std io library. I'm just going to do this real quick. Okay, type in the code real quick. Um, we declared our in invert function and we have three arguments over here. The first argument is going to be the actual integer to invert. The second argument is going to be the position of the start of inversion. And the second, uh, uh, the third argument is going to be the actual amount starting from that position, the actual amount of bits to invert starting from that position p uh, to invert in the integer i. Okay, so that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it like this. Let's define it here, constant i, and over here is p, and over here is n. Okay, so that's our variable names. I'm going to return 0 for now. So how do we do this? A regular inversion for an integer is just taking the complement of our integer. But this is not the same case, as I explained earlier at the start of this video. Um, what we're going to have to do is get some sort of mask. So I'm going to define this mask variable, and I'll put something in parentheses. Uh, whenever we have parentheses, that is an expression and telling the uh, computer that I want to evaluate this uh, expression first before anything else on this line. All right, so let's kind of understand how to um, do this, okay? Let's see. Let's see if we take the complement of 0, and if I shift that by m, right, so that will basically get me three zeros, I mean, you know what? Let me give values for n, okay. So a value for i will just be 127. I'm just giving you a random number. 127, which is represented in binary like this, right? Seven zeros and um, seven ones, I mean, and then just a zero after that. Now notice this is a byte, okay? I'm not gonna be adding another 20, four in, 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 um, zeros here because I'm not doing, I'm just going to show the examples visually in, um, in terms of the byte. Okay, so we have seven, seven ones and one zero. Now, what if I say that my p variable was two and my n variable was three? Okay, so if, again, if my n variable was three, I'm shifting three times. So if I take the complement of one, that's going to give me a bunch of ones, and then if I take the complement, then if I shift by n, that's just going to give me where n is 3, it's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 3 zeros. But n, what, what we want is we want to get 3 ones. Okay, we don't want 3 zeros, we want 3 ones. So how do we do that? We take the complement of that, which gives me 1, 1, 1, then the, what used to be ones are now turning into 0. And again, I'm just going to truncate this to byte only, okay? Because there's no point of adding those zeros. All right, so now that we got this, um, what we need to do is if our position is 2, that means we want to start from the um, second position with an amount of 3. So we're halfway done over here. Obviously, this is going to involve some shifting. So we're going to have to shift simply by P. That's all. So if p is 2, we're going to shift by p, 1, 2. So now we're starting from position, let's see, this is 0, this is position 0 right here, this is 1, and this is 2. So we're starting from position 2, and we have 3 bits, okay, 3 bits that are on. Now this is a mask, okay. A mask uh, will be used to apply some operation to the original integer. So if we have three bits aligned to the integer 
and if I have 0, 1, 2, and then 3 bits, 1, 2, 3. So using the P and N variables, we got a desired mask to invert these three bits. But which operation do we use? Are we going to do AND, OR, or XOR? Well, I use XOR. The reason why I use that is because one, the only, um, the only operation that will get you 1 and 1 to be 0 is XOR. Okay, so therefore, all these three will be turned into 0 after an XOR. So after we get this mask, we're just going to take I and XOR it with mask. Okay, so that's the basics of the invert function. I mean, we're actually done. Okay, so now let us uh, do some code over here, write some code over here in the main function. I'm going to say pointer to I is equal to and pointer malloc. Malloc size of int. I'm going to copy this statement. Okay, now we're going to say int pointer to p, int pointer to m. And I'm just going to scan, you know, to make the program more interactive, not just some boring invert function. Um, we're going to scan from use standard input. And I'm going to pass in my pointer i. The same thing for p and n. Convert it to an integer. So basically, we're going to convert this, whatever that we, whatever we scanned in, from standard input is going to be converted into an integer and then assigned to um, whatever i points to. Same thing for p, same thing for n, right? It's very repetitive, this program. Okay. I'm going to want a simple print statement over here. Okay, so printf, let's see, um, the, the inverted integer is, is okay I'm gonna point right since we're using pointers I'm gonna have to dereference that pointer because um, if I don't dereference I'm just gonna get the address of the value that is stored okay so pointer I pointer P pointer n and now going to be passed into the invert function. The invert function will do its job. And we have to free these pointers. Okay. Um, one thing to note here is that we cannot use regular variables. We can, we can only use pointers. And scanf only accepts pointers. Uh, the reason why um, scanf only accepts pointers is because we're actually changing whatever i points to. We're changing the value of i. I mean, whatever i points to. When I say the value of i, I mean whatever i points to. So we're changing the value of i, and we're changing the value of p and n. Um, but the thing is, if I pass this as a regular variable, if I pass it as a regular variable, I'm just copying its value. So if I change its value in the scanf function, that's not gonna have effect on my other variable in the main function because it's passed by value it's two separate variables if I change one it's not going to have an effect on the other the values are the same but their addresses addresses are not if I pass a pointer I'm copying the pointer but that pointer still retains the value and the, it's, the pointer's value is an address so when I dereference that address I will get the same value from standard input and no, I'll get I'll get the same value. So when I signed to that value, um, whatever it was in standard input, and I signed it and I signed it to whatever point the, the i points to or p points to or n points to, that will still be the same for the um, i for the pointers in our main function. Okay, so there's just something to note there. If you didn't understand that, it's fine. All right, so now that uh, we are done with this program. Let's run it and see what we get. Okay. Let's get um, all my files are stored in documents. So I'm going to compile this. 
and execute it. And let's pass in 127, uh, position of 2 and 3. Okay, just like our example. And remember, what do we get? We got like this weird, we got this weird byte. Um, let me just, let me just uh, make it a little bigger so you can see. Okay, so we passed in 127, we passed in 2 as a position and 3 as an amount. So remember when we passed in 127, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, 7 bits on. And a position of 2 is um, right over here. And then three is these three bits turning into zero. So one, two, three, and then the rest of the one. So what is this? Um, the result will be this um, this integer or this byte. So if we just press enter, uh, we will actually get whatever this integer is. So if we just add all the ones with the correct Placements, let's see, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 32 was 35, plus 64, which is 99. Okay, so we should get 99. Let's just erase this. All right, so we should get 99. Yes, so the inverted integer is 99. Let's just give you one more example. Let's say we have 31. I start from position 1, and I want one bit in position 1. So if we have the um, in binary form 31, position 1 will be over here and if I invert that that will turn to 0 um, so whatever was here the value is 1 bit placement is 2 to the power of 0 so that will be 1 so I'm basically taking away 1 from 31 and that will be 30 okay so we see that uh, basic invert function uh, works and uh, let us close this window all right so Basically, yeah, so this is the invert function. That's, believe it or not, this is how small it is. Um, so yeah, that's the basic way to invert uh, only a specific amount of bits without leaving the other bits changed in your desired um, integer. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.